Life is a journey, and in this journey, we all want to do more, experience more, feel more, and live with no boundaries. And why shouldn't we? Sight System presents Sightseeing. Feel free to go anywhere. So welcome to Mad Artist Publishing. Today we are with the film duo of Robot Genius Films out of San Francisco. They are the ones that created the movie Sight, Daniel Lazo and Mr. Aaron Mayraz. So in 2012, you guys released a short student grad film called Sight about an augmented reality world that's supposedly replacing smartphones with these smart lenses. We're going to go right into the movie site, and we're going to be doing a director commentary. Sounds good. Thanks for having us. Let's, let's jump in. It will be fun. Let's, let's, let's reminisce. Can you hear the audio? Yeah. All right. Yes. So, again, All right, so yeah, go ahead. we can kind of talk about this. It's, uh, it's interesting. Pause right now. Yeah. I want to know whose apartment was this? <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody keeps asking us, and this, this is the, it's a cool bit of trivia. So we were looking, obviously, for a place that looks futuristic. Um, nobody had an apartment like that. Luckily, the, the, the academy where we were studying, they actually redid what was previously their old library. Um, so this room, they just kind of remodeled it. And, you know, there was no furniture inside, and it kind of looked nice and clean and aesthetic. And we just asked the, um, I think they asked the people in charge, hey, can we film our, our film in here? Um, and we were lucky enough. To, it just like, it was like there, just ready for us to, to film. Uh, and it was like a huge, huge fluke. I don't think we'd I'd be able to score a location like that, uh, let alone in on school grounds. Yeah. Uh, so that was like just an amazing coincidence. All right, very cool. Yeah, here in Toronto, every condo looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. It's very. Maybe we should shoot site uh, in Toronto. It's a good site. It's a good yeah, location. Come down. I have. I have a condo, and it's like overseeing right of Toronto. Really? Okay. So who chose? Who, who, who's, who chose this whole scene? Was this based on the video game that you guys saw? Or? Uh, so the idea behind this scene is that uh, we wanted to, from the get-go, the first scene, the first thing that you're seeing is a guy doing something weird in his living room. <laughs> it's not really clear what the hell he's doing. Uh, and through uh, his point of view, you kind of understand what's going on. Uh, and we really like that notion of uh, instead of just uh, putting it into in, in your face, you kind of need to, uh, uh, there's like a what the hell moment uh, that you kind of figure out as you, as you go along. That's my yeah. personal idea carpet, by the way. Wow. <laughs> He kind of reminds me of Vince, the actor Vince Vaughn. If you know who he is. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. All right. So, uh, so in, in case somebody didn't see the first video, uh, any stories? Of, can you tell me the story again of how you went about the casting process with uh, Ori here? Yeah, sure. So for Ori, uh, uh, who portrays Patrick, uh, we did uh, several auditions with several different uh, actors, and there, uh, and there were some really good uh, 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 actors uh, that that came for the auditions. And we did the auditions in the, in a coffee shop, uh, and uh, we part of the audition was to ask the actor to kind of improvise and try to imagine and act what it feels like. You know, integrating with uh, 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 with the interface, and uh, and it was very very strange um, because many actors were just looking uh, directly at the, like the space around them, pointing at stuff. I remember one when the waitress came, 
and she asked us what, what we want to, to drink. And there was this one actor that was so inside the character and he was really trying to impress us. So he, the actress came over and she asked him, what do you want to drink? And he started pointing at the air like he was looking at the virtual menu or, <laughs> or something like that. And he was like, I will have the coffee, please. And he, I guess he thought it was going to impress us, but we find it a little bit awkward at the moment. Uh, we end up going with uh, Ori. Yeah. He, he, what? How many people tried out for the role? Ah, I don't remember. I think like maybe four, five, six, something like that. Again, uh, uh, we had a very tight uh, schedule and no budget whatsoever to 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 uh, uh, make like a very solid addition. So uh, uh, we just gathered like uh, we found like six, seven people. Don't remember the the amount. And Ori definitely stood out uh, among the the others because we were looking for someone. Uh, that's going to be a little bit creepy, but also yeah. very charismatic. Right. And, and or you just have that face. That you know, sociopath when, face, yeah. Exactly. And he was just perfect. You know? And he got it like immediately. Like we yeah. immediately got everything and all the nuances and what, what we want his character to kind of uh, uh, bring out in the movie. And he just got it immediately. He was also like brilliant. He had like great insights throughout the whole uh, shoot. So that was like a great fortunate uh, uh, cast. Okay. So the, all of these, uh, these design things, the UI, the user interface, there, what software did you use to create it? Mm, it's a mix of, of uh, Photoshop and After Effects. It's mostly compositing, tracking footage, and then placing things to, to seem as if they're in the scene. That was like a whole new thing back in the day. And it was like super exciting. Rendering took just like whole nights. I like this. This uh, reminds me of the that Saber Blade game. Just a quick note on the cucumber uh, cutting yep. scene. Yeah, it's not Ori's hands. Uh, for that particular shoot, we, we, we kind of did it uh, on our own. You can notice that it's my hands because it's very hairy. Yeah. <laughs> and Ori, Thank you for that Ori's insight. Hands, <laughs> Ori's hands are very smooth. So yes. uh, uh, we were kind of worried that people might have noticed that we're using oh. different hands. I but no one knows. So. Yeah, well, you would definitely have model hands. <laughs> <laughs> so I really like this idea that your entire wall is just your TV. This would put definitely a lot of companies out of business though. Oh yeah, definitely. First of all, you don't need a lot of decorations, right? Uh, you don't need a TV, you don't need a lot of electronics. Uh, as you can see, the apartment is basically almost completely barren. And I do want to point out the snail zombie video that uh, Patrick is watching when he's just starting eating, it was right. a little bit early. That also is, is a, a wink towards the end of the, of the film. Snail zombies, that's, that's a real thing. It's, either way, there's a parasite that when the snail eats the parasite, the parasite kind of takes control over the snails and they guide the snails towards the highest ground possible. Uh, so birds, would eat the snails. And when the birds are eating the snails, the parasite multiplies himself in the bird's stomach. It's kind of a reference towards the ending where uh, Patrick takes control over Daphne. The, uh, what are these play buttons supposed to do? Is this just for the TV? We kind of thought about how would you kind of control the interface and you know, the most natural answer is you can put it on anything or the system kind of will determine where all of your control things are. So yeah, I'm, it's like a mashup of a TV slash social feed slash anything else you want to have in your field of view. I'm looking at the news and I would just say over here. Yeah, the news feed is hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some comments. It's all Daniel's work, uh, finding all those comments. Oh, the and there's some really funny stuff there. Are these real articles or just something that you just no, read? It's just, it's just made up crap. But I was really happy that people actually paused to read all that stuff because 
I, I had no idea that people would do that. That was it was really funny. I made like a, like I made like the, the the strangest, like the most obscure Seinfeld reference somewhere, and somebody picked up on it. They, they made a comment, and you just like, oh my god, I can't believe they. All right, let's keep going. So he's got badges on the wall there. Are all those badges, I wasn't sure, from his wingman days, or is that different apps? No, so uh, part of the of Patrick's character is the fact that he's overachiever and he's addicted to games. Like a completionist. Yeah, exactly. And he, uh, when he plays the, the, all the different games that uh, you get to see inside, you can notice that he's always playing on the hardest level. That's why he has that wall of badges. That's like he's... Uh, Yes, he's got to have everything just perfect. So uh, his character of reminds me of uh, Christian Bale from American Psycho. That's a good observation. That the reason we called Patrick Patrick oh, was because is, of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very very good eye. I mean, this is so useful in everyday life. You know. And, but this oh, is yeah. awkward. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Patrick. I don't know if there's a behind the, like a deeper meaning of the astrology signs. We, we want to start it, the scene with Patrick again, playing as he's waiting for his day to, to arrive. Right. Right. So as being addictive to, addicted to games, he's playing a game. Time lapse that we created. You remember, we, we spent the entire night. It was shot outside of the Bezalel Academy actually so that's the view of Jerusalem at night and uh, we spent the entire night yeah. <laughs> just for that specific shot for that mm. specific time. dedication what is the story behind uh, Daphne's character then Daphne's character uh, we wanted someone first of all be attractive second of all we wanted someone that would uh, be a little bit gullible and naive. Patrick is kind of manipulating uh, Daphne. We thought that Daphne's character should be, again, someone that will fall for that and uh, just a little bit more naive and innocent. The actress that's playing her is uh, Dvora, and Dvora is actually a good uh, friend of, of, of mine. She's a good uh, friend of my wife. She's working on on, uh, on films uh, 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 that she's directing as well. Back then she was just starting as an actress, so there was something very innocent, something very uh, unsecure about her and, uh, and about her performance. And that was something that we actually were looking for because we wanted Daphne to have a range to the characters. All right, let's keep going. It's a sports jacket, so it's a lot less official than it looks. What do you mean? Sorry? What's the difference between a sports jacket and a normal one? Uh, I guess a sports jacket is for people who want to look good even when they're chased by the police. It looks like he's accessing information before he answers the question about the jacket. So he kind of makes that silly jacket reference so he knows that he's not doing so well and he's, he, he's the one who's firing up the, the Wingman app. Uh, oh, whether it runs in the background or not, that's, that's up for... That's up for interpretation. Yeah, but he's the one who's actively launching it because he wants this date to, to go well. Yeah, the idea is to start the date very awkwardly and right. he's making a very weird remark and that's why he's, he's deciding to use the wigman. Have you guys went on the date and had some sort of an assistance during your date, whether it's an app or a friend? Or First of all, all of us, or at least the single ones, uh, are are using it to some degree, meaning before you go to a date, you would usually look the person up on social media, whether it's Facebook or whatnot. You would kind of research before you're meeting the, the, the person and you kind of, you know, put notes in your mind, okay, that she likes to talk about cats or, you know, right. she works at a museum. I think we're all doing it to some degree. Yeah, when I was single, th there was no option, you know, to use that sort of technology. Okay, let's keep going. Sorry? What's the difference between a sports jacket and a normal one? Uh, I guess a sports jacket is for people who want to look good even when they're chased by the police. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're hungry. This yeah. place has the best burgers in town. Oh. Actually, I'm a vegetarian. 
Oh. Yeah. Really? Because you didn't say it on your profile, so. Well, I don't write everything on my profile. By the way, uh, I just want to say, I want to talk a little bit about this location. This is also, again, we were students. We had no money whatsoever to, to pay for locations. This specific location was shot at the cafeteria of uh, Israel uh, Museum uh, in, in Jerusalem. So they have this very, very unique cafeteria uh, slash restaurant. Uh, and uh, there's like an establishing shot later on with uh, this incredible uh, 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 pool and statue and just everything about it uh, uh, was was just screaming futuristic and uh, yeah I was uh, uh, we were really lucky that uh, they, they gave us the permission to shoot there for free mm -hmm. do you want to go somewhere else no 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 it's okay I'll find something on the menu well how about a glass of wine for starters yeah great so are there any other things in your profile? Yeah, a question about the the interface, Daniel, because I guess you were in charge of that. How do you envision this interface to work with your eyesight? Like, do you move your eyes to the side? Because he doesn't seem to be when he's ordering and paying. Oh, okay. So uh, I have a ready-made answer for that. <laughs> so here's the thing. The, the way it's, it's, it theoretically works inside of the world of the film, it's like a combination of kind of gaze and uh, you know your brain patterns. Theoretically, the lens can know what you're looking at and what you're focusing on, and based on that, you kind of make your selection and interact with the interface without having to make the gestures and the physical movements to do any of that. It doesn't really exist real in real life. It, it does exist to some degree, obviously not in that form factor and in that level of, uh, of accuracy. It's a lot easier for us to kind of mock up a working interface that looks believable. It's a whole different thing to make something like that. It works in real life. Uh, we have several opportunities where we're mocked up actual interfaces for actual things uh, in our normal day jobs. And UX designers have got cut it really hard because to make the things uh, that seem on film, you know, uh, easy and intuitive, uh, to make them work in real life, it's a whole different story. It's very, very hard. There's a lot of questions that you got to answer that you don't have to answer on film as to how does this work and does this feel like something natural and yeah. is it cumbersome, is it easy, is it understandable? All these are things that we don't really have to deal with. The only thing we have to deal with is will the viewer understand what he's watching and what's happening? Right. Any other things in your profile that you didn't write about that I should know or...? <laughs> Are you scared of jogging by yourself in the city? Not really. Besides, I'm about to hit level five on Marathon Master. Pretty impressive. I know. <laughs> mm. So what he's comparing about? his scores to hers, right? Exactly. Okay. We were very nervous that people won't pick up on these things because there's not a lot of time to read all this text. Uh, so it was, it was a very hard challenge editing this in a way where the users will pick up on these little nuggets of information. Um, like when we showed this film to like our parents at the day, they were like, oh, this is really nice. I really like the shiny bits. And they're like, What's, what was the film about? <laughs> I think establishing uh, the protagonist, Patrick, as a narcissist and uh, mm -hmm. as this creepy sort of guy who's just, like you said, an overachiever, as long as you get that in the beginning, you should be able to pick up on the clues as long as you're paying attention. And I really like the uh, then you have the, the suggestions that the AI is providing him, like look interested, smile, you know, things like that. That is like real. That's that's gold. If there was an AI interface that could do that in real life, imagine that it's for salespeople to persuade oh, a yeah. customer uh, when you're selling a house or a car. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. On my last route, my site crashed. So scary. I didn't see anything. I couldn't find my way home. Sight doesn't crash. Oh, it did. I was totally lost. I didn't see anything. That doesn't happen since our last pack. Do you work there or something? <laughs> really? Yeah. But... Wow. What do you do there? Nothing serious. I'm just a simple engineer. Actually, I read about your company in the news. So creepy. <laughs> It's just like continuing, like every second is providing additional information about your subject, 
right? Oh, yeah. But anyway, I don't want to. Oh, yeah, definitely. Certain moment where Daphne is asking him about. Yeah, it's just going to come up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's right here. Here? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, I say I that. Yeah, they're under, under investigation. So I kind of figured they were, they're obviously mind controlling the people. That's why her thing crashed when she was running. Exactly, and also I would point out the name of the yeah, the news. Yeah, time. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that would put over there. So you've got your hands in there, and then you got your name. In there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't want to talk about work. Not when I'm here with such a pretty lady. <laughs> Okay. I love I love Ori. He just has just the right amount of asshole in his performance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really get me. You know, I can tell what you're thinking right now. Really? <laughs> but well, finished our drinks. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> How about we go to my place for a nightcap? So this part is where I got, okay, he's probably going to like rape her or do something. Right where it said pupil dilation suggests positive affection and cognitivity. Definitely looking for cues that she's intoxicated so he can have his way with her. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. We, we, I mean, we love that information kind of peppered there for those who kind of seek it. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Theoretically, you can have your wingman kind of dialed up to super creepy and take advantage of, or probably less. So I guess his was on the, the not so not not so polite setting. How about we go to my place for a nightcap? Well, if you're so good in reading my mind, you should know what I'm going to say. I like the little icon, <laughs> and he knew that he had her. When she would say yes, the little, like, yeah, you got this icon popped up on the oh, end. Uh, thumbs up uh, thing, yeah. There's like, uh, he's getting like achievements uh, yeah. every every once in a while. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, the score goes up and up and up. Exactly. But is there, a, are they playing against some people? Because that would be pretty cool if there was like an extra thing of a scoreboard. You know, the creep, the creep scoreboard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't want to point it out directly, but it is definitely uh, kind of a world where you're, you know, you're. We're already kind of sharing our achievements and badges on Xbox or PlayStation. Those are kind of pitted up against our friends. So it, I'm guessing it's not going to be a whole lot different uh, in the future. I'm pretty sure you can uh, brag about the achievements in your date. And you know, be compared to other uh, creep friends of yours who do the same. Yeah. Mm. So we definitely wanted to hint toward that uh, possibility. Is that my phone? Nice place you got. I also think in this new world, the the commodities all right, I guess. of paintings and actual tangible items would go up. Because if nobody needs to pay for something, I would imagine a lot of tangible creative products would go up. We had that same discussion as well. Where you know, in a, in a world where you can buy virtual objects fairly cheaply, so you wouldn't need, or it would be rare to kind of find actual physical things. That's why the world is kind of sort of like a placeholder for all the digital content that you want to place for yourself. Yeah. A toast for a perfect night. So why is she seeing his badges? So we wanted for her to kind of figure out that he's been using the, the Wingman app on her. How do I know that this is the Wingman? I thought this was just all the app. The, the, the concept was that kind of like in an act of carelessness, you know, he, you know one would usually hide his, uh, his achievement well from everyone to see, but he maybe left that setting on. Uh, yeah, on so. open to everyone. So Daphne kind of browses through his uh, achievement uh, badges there and she yeah. finds the wingman. If you compare his apartment, how his apartment looks through the uh, through the contact lenses, 
uh, after the date. And, and if you compare it to the beginning of the film where he's eating, you can see that uh, uh, the, the, the interface are completely different. So he definitely arranged his apartment for Daphne. So instead of having the TV and the news feed and all that stuff, he replaced it with Starry Night, the Van Gogh painting. And so he definitely uh, put some effort uh, in order to uh, 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 arrange the apartment def differently, but he forgot to switch off his trophy wall. Now, instead of like hiding like a porn mag when you're... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Why are you drinking? What's that? No. A dating app. No, 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 no. Oh, it's for I programming. It's it. just my luck. A friggin' gay jump. Disgusting. Wait, no, wait. Do not touch me, you creep. Said it. I said wait. So how is he hacking her, though? Like, just through his mind? Just, I mean, just explain it in theory. How did you envision him hacking it so quickly? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, there is, like, we don't have a set answer for that. Um, but there is definitely a shot where you get to see sort of what he's doing, yeah, right uh, like a Linux uh, kind of uh, interface. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's that. That's the one. So uh, uh, basically, it's just uh, we already established the fact that he's working for a site, uh, so he already has some unique uh, access that uh, the usual person, usual guy, won't have. Uh, so what he's doing is basically accessing her profile and through that he's taking control. But we didn't really want to say exactly what sort of uh, control or what exactly he's doing to her. Uh, uh, we wanted to kind of uh, leave that uh, open, open at the end uh, because we felt that giving a very, very uh, 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 restrictive answer would kind of ruin the ending. Mm -hmm. There's also an Easter egg in this shot, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, so Dr. Jackal, right? And Mr. Hyde? Is that one? Exactly. So, yeah, that's that's another Easter egg pointing out uh, Patrick's personality, uh, being one person on the outside, but uh, having a completely different personality on the other hand, that it's, that is more hidden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try this again. Yeah, awesome film. Uh, I mean, there's so much that I could just talk about and ask. Uh, I mean, there's so many comparables of this film, of what's going on, what's, what's happening now, and it's an evolution of technology, right? If him being untruthful with these apps is no different than people uploading pictures of themselves being 20 years younger or 10 years younger, right? I know friends went on dates from people on Tinder and they look like completely different people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, everyone are want to have this sort of a persona, you know, they have that persona that uh, they're, they're putting out there, which is usually, uh, you know, uh, showing how successful you are, you are how happy you are, uh, how young you look. And I just want to also mention a, a deep fake, the technology that being developed right now, which is using artificial intelligence to kind of do like a face tracking and then doing all sorts of manipulations on your face. For example, there's like a Snapchat, a new AR filter that allows you to swap your face there with, yeah. to swap your gender. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy, and imagine that in the future, not only your social media page would be uh, fake, you know, would be, uh, 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 the, you know, it's not going to be you, it's going to be a persona uh, yeah. that you put out there. Imagine that it's not going to live only there, but when people would talk to each other, because you have that technology in your eyes, you would talk to a person, and there's a good chance that the person will not look exactly like that. Maybe instead of having blue eyes, they actually have uh, brown eyes. You get to keep wearing your Instagram mask uh, to go with you everywhere. Exactly. And also, it's going to be a very interesting world to live in because now you kind of carry your fake life in your Instagram account as this kind of ID card to who you're supposed to appear uh, to other people. In the early 2000s, you, uh, you had a platform called Second Life where people yes. used to... Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 
alternate uh, world, build their whole identity, a lonely high school housewife in Iowa, and she could be like a superwoman in a super world. And I think augmented reality is going to kind of bridge that gap between, you know, these virtual fantasies and, and real life and have this interesting mixture of in between. Like we could get to the states of this movie, surrogates. The concept is a little more likely that we will control our own avatars instead of physically needing to even be anywhere. We can just have somebody who looks the way we want it to look, does the things that we want it to do, and then we can just pay for upgrades to them instead of going to the gym, for example. We couldn't agree with you more. I, I would just say that surrogates is more like a you know, film that takes place in the, in the distance future. Like it's not something that uh, uh, can happen in the next 10, 20 years. I would say that the idea is something that's being developed right now, not as a robots that are walking uh, and, and we control them remotely, but avatars. That's something that is extremely hot right now. Uh, uh, right now you can uh, go into a chat room and uh, have a meeting with people and you would use this uh, avatar, right? A lot of companies are actually working on avatars. I would say Facebook is probably the one that, that is leading the, the field uh, of avatars. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely something that is going to be part of our future. Well, I'm sure we could talk about these topics for a long, long time, but... Uh... Uh, I want to talk uh, about uh, the, the Kickstarter campaign and what are some of the perks and bonuses that people can get. Uh, let me just pull up the actual site here. So I'm going to share my screen. So to get to the Kickstarter campaign, people can go to sitextended.com. Which... Also, they can look up Site Extended on, on Facebook. Uh, we publish a lot of uh, updates uh, on the Facebook page. We have quite a bit of followers there, and we try to release uh, sneak peeks and updates into the process. So the Kickstarter was only launched. We, we put a pretty modest an achievable funding goal there. So, so this is really a way for the fans of the original site to get more of what they loved in the original short film. Mm -hmm. and, and it's an amazing way for us to, to actually uh, have full control and make this epic story the way we intended it to be. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of the backers will have uh, exclusive uh, insight into the production. We're going to have a very rich production blog with constant images and videos of the film being made and the sets and the, uh, and the talent that's going to be in the film. So all the backers could be watching the film getting made alongside with us until it's released. Right. And it's only 150 bucks, guys, to get, uh, to get your image or photo into the film. You can find all the links to this Kickstarter campaign and the other videos in the description. We got to wrap up the, we gotta wrap up the, uh, the interview. So, uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say thank you so much for having us. It was a great time. And check out Site Extended. We're like super excited uh, about this bigger iteration of Site. Uh, it's going to be developing a lot on the original uh, story. And it's, um, how should I put this? It's going to be a much more deeper investigation of, of Patrick or a character like Patrick. And you're going to have a lot more of the, of the creepy and the interesting and the thought provoking. Yeah, and I just want to give uh, one uh, shout out to uh, two people. First of all, the sound designer who worked on site, Boaz Bachra, who's, uh, who was brilliant. Uh, amazing. He did all the uh, sound effects uh, of the interfaces and the sound design and the mix. Uh, he did a great job and he's also going to be working with us uh, on, the, on, the, on site extended. And the second person I want to give a shout out is Hanan Revivo, the, the composer who uh, did the, the soundtrack for site. And he's also coming back uh, and he's going to work with us on Site Extended. The music was absolutely amazing and we're looking forward to, to, to make more of that for Site Extended for sure. Is there any way uh, people can download that or from iTunes or anything like that? Not yet. We're actually working on, on it as, as, as we speak, okay. uh, but not yet. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, so the contract for Site Extended is going to be available as a perk on the Kickstarter page. And we might also include the original score for, for Site as a bonus for uh, for our backers. Right, so everybody uh, head on over to Kickstarter. Uh, you know, this you got about a month to go and there's some really cool perks like being inside the movie right here or having your name in the credits. Before we do go, let me just play the extended trailer because we haven't done that.
Well done. You know, I can tell what you're thinking right now. Really? Again. All right, so again, thank you guys so much for tuning in and head on over to our community tab where you can find the latest and the greatest films that we're getting from the archives. Subscribe, click that bell, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks thank you very friend. much. And uh, we'll you. see you in the next one. Bye bye. Oh my God, there it is. There it is. Oh, this, hey, is our, up, this is our friend Candy. Hey. He's been gracious enough mm -hmm. to uh, to lend us his beautiful Ferrari for this shoot. Absolutely. Uh, and and we're guys. super thankful. And I think it's going to come out really awesome. You should definitely check out his Instagram account. Yeah, very excited to be a part of this. And uh, yeah, the car is yours. Mm -hmm.